Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 478. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my College website link, and you can download the workbook. Excel Magic Trick 478 to 479. I'll have to fix that file name. <clears throat> hey, this is what we have here. We have uh, some times and dates here, and inside are people scheduled. And we want to be able to simply type Fred here and Fred right here and then come down here and type Fred and before I hit enter uh, I guess you can't see it because it's all green but the, uh, his dates and times will come down here so it'll appear you'll see it has two appointments and then we have the date time and the date and time now here's the deal about this one I've already done a video on this one uh, Excel Magic Trick 149 and this was a ridiculous formula not only it, it handled most situations for duplicates but not um, when there was a name here and here. Oh, and not only that, but Don Quixote from the Mr. Excel message board had a brilliant insight to make the formula much easier. Now, the big trick here is going to be, I'm just going to delete all this. The big trick is you have to know that dates are actually serial numbers. So if I get rid of all the formatting with Control Shift tilde, that's the number of days since December 31st, 1899. So it's an integer. I'm going to Control Z. Keyboard shortcut to get rid of all the format, Control Shift tilde. Number format, that is. That's how far it is through a 24 hour day. So times are decimals and dates are integers. And guess what? When you add them, if you add this integer to this time and this integer to this time, the 10 a.m. decimal with the integer will be greater. And that's the whole conceptual trick behind uh, extracting uh, the dates and times given uh, the inside of a schedule table. Now really this is like a reverse two-way lookup, right? Because we, we want to give uh, this little table here Sue's name. We find this one, go up here and get that one and that one. Alright, here's how it goes. I'm going to do the inside of the formula first. Small equals small and then I'm going to, because what we have is since we have duplicates, the small function will allow us to be able to find all of the dates and times associated with Sue's name, which would be one, two, three, so three of them. So there's three duplicates. Small will allow us to take those three duplicates, and as we copy it across this way, take a succeedingly larger value. So the criteria for true and false is it Sue is if anything in this whole range right here, and I'm going to hit the F4 key, is equal to, let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger. If that's equal to this one, and we have to hit the F4 key one, two, three time, column needs to be locked this way, but when we move the formula down, it needs to move to Joe. What do we want if that's true? Comma, the value of true, simply these values, F4 to lock it, those are the integers, the dates, plus the times, and these are the decimals, and F4 in both cases. And let's just take a look. I'm going to highlight this right here and hit the F9 key. Okay, so remember the conceptual trick is when we add them together, let's take Sue's name. This is a 1 9. The first, um, uh, and Sue is, there's the semicolon, so 1, 2, oh, we can't even see this. There we go. One, two, three, four. That's the first row. So then one, two. So this is that um, Sue's nine o'clock appointment. Notice it's four zero one eight seven point three seven five. Um, and then in the next row, the second, uh, the right here. This is the next time. This is the same date. The four zero one eight seven. Ah, but 10 a.m. is 0.4166 through the day. So when we ask the small to find the smallest one, it's always going to find that one first and then that one. And so that's the whole conceptual trick here. Control Z. All right, so if um, we find any Sue's, then please add up those dates. 
comma, I mean, close parentheses, because right here we don't need this false. Right? And if you highlight this if right here and hit F9, you can see it's only given us 1, 2, 3, all three of Sue's times. And it will extract the uh, smallest one first, et cetera, Control-Z. And how do we extract them? When we go this way, we need a formula number incrementer. So we'll use columns. Columns. And I'm sitting in cell C11, so dollar sign C11, colon C11. That's locked. That's not. As it moves this way, it'll get the number 1, 2, 3, et cetera. Close parentheses on the small. Now, let's just see that this, this is the, the heart of this formula. Control, Shift, Enter, because we have an array in the uh, if logical test argument. And then I'm going to copy it over. And we're going to get a bunch of junk here, but that's OK. Um, what we see is we get the first appointment, the ninth at 9 o'clock, and then the second appointment, the ninth, I'm sorry, uh, 1, 9. So January 9th at 9 a.m., and then January 9th again at 10 a.m. Uh, he has three appointments, but here we get that num error. And down here we get a bunch of junk because there aren't, these people aren't, uh, there yet. So we want to amend this formula right here. There's an if, and there's two things we need to do. We need to say when this cell is blank and when the, the count of this columns is greater than this three, then we'll turn the, we'll show a blank. So you ready? If, and we have two conditions. Is this blank and is the count the columns greater than that? So I'm going to use or, because either one can be the trigger to turn this formula off. All right, I'm going to control V. That's the columns. When columns are greater than this, and I'm going to hit the F4. Okay, that's the first condition, comma, or this. And I have to lock it. One, two, three is equal to blank. Now I'm going to close parentheses on the or. You can see my screen tip down here. Now it's saying, what's the value if true, comma, double quote, double quote. That is blank. Otherwise, please just do the small. And there's the value of false. Come to the end, close parentheses, and Control Shift Enter. Copy this over, and then double click and send it down. And so now we have our schedule. If I come up here and type um, Tom, and then Tom has an appointment over here also. And then come over here on Tom. Now, we could have, what would be really good is you have the formula for creating a unique list down here, which I did a video just a couple weeks ago. You can search for a, a unique list from formula. But there it is. It pops up just fine. By the way, there's a count if here. If that's equal to blank, then please show blank. Otherwise, count if. And it counts all of those from up here. All right, that is just a genius from a, a Don Quixote, a, a great trick to keep up our sleeves, this idea of a, a date as a serial number and a time as a decimal added together, and you get a complete list. Now, uh, this formula only works when there's a date and a time. So when you have date and time, reverse two-way lookup, man, that's a genius formula. In the next video, 79, um, we'll look at a robust formula for lots of duplicates like this situation here, but the column headers and the row headers will not have convenient dates and times. All right, we'll see you next trick. <laughs> oh yeah, I almost forgot. How is this date and time showing up here? If I click on the cell or highlight the whole range and do Control-1, custom number format, custom, you simply type MD slash YY comma, and then hour colon minute and space AM PM, or whatever variation on this you want, then that custom number format interprets that um, decimal. If I control shift tilde here, you can see that's the actual number which represents this particular day in history. And 0.375 is 9 divided by 24. So custom number format. All right, see you next trick.